The scripture reading this morning is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There were two processions in the city of Jerusalem that first Palm Sunday. We believe that Pilate would have come from the west side of the city, from the fortress at Caesarea by the sea, marching the Roman armies up to the city of Jerusalem for the Passover, and entering with great fanfare, it was a show of force. Cavalry on their horses, foot soldiers armed. A demonstration to the whole city that if anything got out of hand, Roman power would quickly Fall. That first procession is a celebration of the way of power. Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem from the east. He would have come down from the Galilee region along the Jordan River Valley and would have made his way to the city from the east side. And just as the Roman procession is filled with power, Jesus' procession is different. Riding on a donkey, no swords, Jesus comes teaching a way of love. And just as those two processions were in that city on that day, those two forces would collide throughout Holy Week, resulting in Jesus' arrest and his execution. There were two processions in El Salvador in 1980. There was a young priest named Oscar who was the apple of everyone's eye, a bright, 
clergy person. But the way of power was the church interwoven with the wealthy few in El Salvador. And Oscar was the apple of their eyes. Sent him to Rome where he studied and came back to El Salvador. Became the bishop. And as long as he stood up for the poor rather politely, that is, just softly enough not to engender the anger of the powerful, he was praised. But then one day, one of his priests was killed. And when the bishop tried to get the nation of El Salvador to investigate it, they would not. And Oscar Romero got off the procession of power and began to march in the procession of love. And like Jesus, one day he celebrated communion in a hospital chapel. And like Jesus, there he died assassinated. The last words of, the words of his last sermon stick with us. One must not love oneself so much as to avoid getting involved in the risks of life that history demands of us. Those who defend, those who fend off the danger will lose their lives, while those who out of love for Christ give themselves to service of others will live. Live like that grain of wheat that dies but only apparently. If it did not die, it would remain alone. The harvest comes only about because it dies. Oscar Romero got out of the procession of power to march in a procession of love. So on this Palm Sunday, I ask, do we see those two parades before us? One of power pushing us along and another of love, awakening us to something more. Amen. As a forgiven and forgiving people, let us offer our gifts to God. Hi, I'm Peter Hay, the pastor at Wesley Church. And uh, I want to thank you for viewing this video clip of a recent service. There are things about Wesley Church that you simply cannot experience through such a video clip. We are a gathering of people very committed to an inclusive way of living out the Christian faith. And we strive to quiet the conflict among all people by creating a compelling environment that fosters spirituality, community engagement, and social justice. If this vision speaks to your heart as it speaks to ours, we hope you'll join us. We gather for worship three times over the course of a weekend at Wesley Church. At four o'clock on Saturday afternoons, we have a casual service where we pray together, we read scripture, and we share in the, in the message in an informal way. And then every Sunday morning at 830, we gather in the chapel for a service that includes Holy Communion in addition to the preaching and the prayers. And then at 10.30 we gather in our main sanctuary where we are enriched by our wonderful pipe organ and our choir and our band. These are very powerful experiences of Christian nurture and we would love to have you join us. In our eyes of I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, yeah.
and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I'll rise up I like the waves. I'll rise up in spite of. 